So I hope everyone's doing well. This week when I asked for questions, you guys delivered. So let's just jump right in. So the first one, how would you go about color grading something that was shot in a non-flat profile, such as a smartphone? Well, I would actually treat this pretty much the same way. We just wouldn't have to do the flat profile conversion. The only thing to look out for is maybe like clipped highlights or, you know, really dark shadows that kind of like clip a bit. Other than that, there really isn't much that you would have to um, like do that's different. I know that you stated that the contrast and saturation is already baked in. It's not that big of a deal as long as it was shot well and you know you don't have let's say your subject's face like really clipped and you know you can actually see detail in the skin and in the face and stuff like that there really isn't much of a problem i would kind of just look at the shot in which you you were trying to mimic so i would whatever look that you like from another genre or from another film and bring that side by side into da vinci and try to match the tonality values and like skin tones and stuff like that. And then from there, you'll get a better understanding of how you have to work with the limitations with that particular footage that you're working with. Do you have to shoot it where you have like a silk over top so that you don't have those, you know, really strong shadows being cast on the skin? You know, more time with that particular footage to actually see its pros and cons. And if you're the one that's shooting it, you can see the limitations of that sensor. So jumping over to the next one, I've seen you make good use of expressions in a couple of your videos lately. It's a little abstract, but something on the functions available for each field. So there's a bunch of different things that you can actually put in that expression field. There are a bunch of uh, expressions and sometime I'll make a list and put it on my website, but I currently don't have one. And then the other thing that you can do is you can write Lua right into one of those. So Lua is like a coding language. And if you take a look at one of the packs that I recently came out with, it had a drop down, and in that drop down, you could select between different reflections that were used and that is actually run by uh, adding expressions in for each one of those so I kind of across the whole uh, node tree I have each one of like these like little groups of nodes that all have um, different values that are associated to them and then this drop down is just calling for one of those so once it calls one of those within that node tree, it says, okay, I'm that one, so I'm going to change my value, and then that's the one that, that comes through. Um, sometime I'll, I'll, I'll dive into this a little bit deeper, but there are a lot of different expressions. I don't know if there is a list, but I'll get around to making a list shortly, that's for sure. How would I go about making a background plate, including bokeh light effect. All right, so just jumping over here, we're just gonna go right into Fusion. I'll make a Fusion Comp, just right clicking here, Fusion Comp, 24 frames for this is perfectly fine. I'd probably match whatever your project is. And then uh, the easiest way to do this is just to, actually I gotta open up this comp. The easiest way to do this is just to make a uh, particle system. So I'll just connect this over show the particle system here. In the renderer, I'm gonna change this to 2D. And then come over to the emitter. I'm gonna change the region to all. So it's just the whole screen, unless you have a specific spot you want them to spawn in. And then I'll come over to style, and we'll just change this to something that would uh, suit this. So we'll just go with this that doesn't have the uh, soft edges. And then we'll just come in a little bit and we'll change the size. Let's see what two looks like, maybe three. So now we have the little uh, orbs and then we could change the color depending on what you got here. Let's uh, add a quick black background so we can see this sitting on black because your video had it on black. So we would just add something like that. You could bring them out this way if you wanted them to like interact with one another. So when they're on top of each other like this, you can um, see that. If not, then just bring it over to be a little bit more on the saturated side. So that would kind of be there. I would, uh, towards the uh, beginning here, 
you could come over to the beginning part here and change the amount that you want to spawn. Whatever number you make this, that's how many are gonna spawn every frame. And then down here, the life, that's how many frames that those are gonna last. So if this one's right here, it's going to last right there for the next 100 frames and then it'll uh, die. Um, if you're doing Boca, I don't really think that you would want that many. So we might only do like four. And uh, let me actually change this to uh, a rectangle and then just make sure that it stays on screen. Okay. And uh, the other thing that you, depending on where, you know, what you want this to, uh, excuse me. So I would make this four and then the next frame, I would just kill it. So like those four just stay there. And if you want them to stay your whole duration, so I got 119 frames, this is actually 120 because we start our first frame is counted as uh, frame zero. So I can just turn this up to 130 and then they'll, they'll live this whole time. If you did want some type of movement, you just increase this velocity a bit and then they'll move. Obviously they're just going to move linear. There's a ton of different things that you can do to, uh, to have them uh, act differently. If you just right click and come into tools and then particles, here are all the different ways in which you can have the particles interact with one another. So I just put like vertex. I'll just connect this up right here. And then pretty much when they get near that, they're going to be affected by that. And if they're not in there, then they're not affected by it. Um, but yeah, you could just play around with them. I don't know exactly the look that you're going for or even if you want them to move at all But that's kind of how I would at least you know start doing it if you wanted them to be Shaped a little differently. You could you know, just start to change these uh, shapes So if you wanted to make it seem like you could see those edges on the bokeh, you could do that additionally if you come into effects and then templates you have um, lens flares. Now these lens flares are made all different ways. Um, some of them are lens flares, some of them do have bokeh in them. Um, but let's take a look at this one. Uh, it looks like I have to feed something into here. Um, so there's that and they can come into these tools and you could adjust how these uh, interact. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So there's a ton of different things that you can do. Like you could even have these like off screen and then have this move around. Uh, but that's more of like a lens flare instead of bokeh. Uh, but yeah, just look through this and that's kind of how I would tackle that issue. I'm not sure if you have any right now, but maybe a quick overview on correcting slash balancing raw slash log footage. I'm guessing you're just trying to get it from log to something with a bit more saturation and, and uh, like you can see more tonality values out of the out of it. Um, I know that you said that you like want to have it balanced, but I'm not sure if that if what you mean by that, if like the shot was shot incorrectly or whatnot, but this was shot with uh, S log. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to take a bit of this and I'm not exactly sure what you meant by uh, what you were saying in there. I don't know if like the shot was shot uh, incorrectly and you're trying to fix it because fixing a raw shot is really easy. You can just use the camera controls, but if you mean like getting it from the flat look into something that has like a bit more saturation and tonality values. Um, I can show you a simple way to do that. Uh, what I would end up doing is in our, move this over a bit, but one of the things that I like to use if you have different shots um, all over the place with uh, different color spaces, what you can do is you can just put in here transform and we'll just bring the transform over and then you can set what your in is and what you want to have it spit out. So, I will just do S gamma and then uh, S log three. 
and right away I mean over here there's like a or on this side here there's like a screen that's that's shining on everything but currently like this is a very good spot and I didn't have to do anything it's because it's mapping the way in which those color spaces are and then we're mapping it to whatever our uh, output is so currently I think this is just uh, uh, rec 709 I think I have this set as yeah I just have it set as rec 709 so everything is just getting um, converted over to that uh, but that that's pretty much how I would do it make a video on how to make fancy slash trendy transitions so I did make a video on a like a spin transition and a zoom transition and like a wipe I believe um, I would probably do them different now that Fusion is in DaVinci Resolve, but uh, you could take a look at that and get some ideas on how to uh, produce like those kind of transitions that's super vague of like trendy. I don't know what's trendy nowadays um, <laughs> when it comes to transitions, but uh, I guess what you see in a lot of like YouTube videos, I guess that would be slash fancy trendy or like zoom transitions and wipe transitions that have like a blur and some type of distort and stuff like that. Um, I actually have a pack that does that. Uh, but I would say if you're trying to make something on your own or just learn, I have a couple of videos that uh, you would at least be able to get some ideas. I would Today I'd probably do it a little different now that DaVinci or uh, Fusion's in DaVinci, but at least you can get some ideas there. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of it for this one. Thank you guys so much for giving me your questions. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.